Hi, I'll explain. Uh, <laughs> that makes two of us. <laughs> um, hi, my name's Darcy. Um, this is the very first episode of the Palms Off Hogcast. We've never done this before, so bear with us while we sort of, you know, iron out some details and iron out some creases and stuff like that. But today we're joined by Joel Gibbons. He's owner of Plenty of Games in Melbourne. Um, and uh, he's quite large in the Magic and Flesh and Blood player base. So thanks for coming, dude, for our first podcast. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Nice having the most smiley of all the faces to come <laughs> in for our first one. So it's sick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank You're you. most very welcome. Uh, for people that don't know, depending on how we release things, um, you're training Jack for like a vlog sort of segment that we're doing where we're just basically training Jack up, uh, who is the other co-owner of Palms Off Gaming to play uh, Flesh and Blood. And he had no has had no background in you know, Flesh and Blood or many TCGs outside of, we used to play Pokemon. Yeah. But as you can probably, you know, you of all people would know, very, very different. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so he's going to be training for a week with Joel and then he's going to be thrown in to play a tournament at your store. So yeah. tell us about your store and how your tournaments are run and uh, how successful that's been for you. Yeah, so uh, we've got three other owners, myself, uh, Trent, Isaac and Scott. Uh, we got together year and a half ago now, something like that, uh, with the idea of bringing a card store back into the city of Melbourne, into the CBD, and uh, you know, giving people a place to play again. And um, We wanted it to be a really community-driven thing, you know, build, build communities and um, have people feel like they're a part of it rather than you know, just being there sort of thing. So hmm. that was our whole goal. Um, so it took us about a year to find a venue sort of thing. So. Yeah. A lot of work going on in the background during that time. But yeah, we finally found a venue in uh, May this year and yeah, opened up and things have been unreal since then. Um, yeah, we run weekly tournaments for a lot of card games and uh, right. yeah, slinging a lot of card wall yeah, <laughs> heaps, weekly. Yeah. Heaps. You guys are crushing already. So with um, did you struggle obviously setting up a shop during that time bracket as well, given like it, it was essentially sort of just coming out of that weird – yeah. Post lockdown sort of feeling. So and- when we first started everything, it was sort of in between lockdowns, uh, mm. uh, after lockdown one, but before lockdown two. So we were actually looking at leases in the CBD, and then we got locked down again. So we were like, well, luckily we didn't find anything yeah, during that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been a bit of a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was sort of a very weird time because you know we're going into this after the lockdowns had finished. We were going into the CBD and so quiet and we're like is, mm. you know, i heard it was like a ghost town. it was it was yeah. absolutely like a ghost town so we were a bit not hesitant but just like is this is this what it's going to be you know mm. like is this the way it's going to be moving forward but over the last six months having been open the city is just going from strength to strength so it's uh you know it's great to see so many people back as people start city. like flooding back yeah in the city. Uh, you know yeah. the cbd is packed now again yeah. so it's uh Feels like we got back to a bit of a normality after you know what what was a very difficult time for everyone. Yeah, and I'm sure like everybody that actually plays as well would be like so over the moon to be coming back in store. Although like there's also like that element of oh we've been locked down for two years. How do I talk to people? Sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Has that <laughs> has that influenced like the player base as well? Have yeah. you noticed that as like a player yourself as well? I, I think. I think for the most people, it's it's a, just a relief to be back, like mm. to be able to do it again. Uh, you know, I think for many people, you know, playing these games is a great way to meet new people, socialize, and you know, just just get out of the house, sort of thing. So I think it's a it's a relief for a lot of people to have that back in their lives. And yeah, yeah. it might have taken a bit, you know, to get used to the social interaction again after being at a computer screen for the last yeah, two years, yeah. sort of thing. But I think for the most part, part people are just embraced. The opportunity to be back out there and uh you know spending time doing the things that they love again so you yeah know, it's been we've seen such a massive response from people it's been great yeah that's why we have like at palms off has such a respect for physical storefronts and that's why a lot of our like processes and stuff like particularly surrounding our like rrps and all that sort of jazz is like mainly geared at talk about towards like protecting physical storefronts as well because like as a community it's different like playing on talking online and then there's a whole different vibe i feel like going in store and actually meeting and trading in person all that sort of stuff you don't have to mail back and forth and it's just a little bit more wholesome a little bit more interactive and a little bit more healthier for the mind i think yeah um so yeah particularly two years out of lockdown as well would have been harder i you know 
you were saying, oh, like imagine if we had it before lockdown, yeah. like or in between the two, and then you've got these people that, you know, maybe not for TCG, solely TCG companies or businesses, but people that have just signed like, you know, three-year leases and it's just like, yeah. cool, two years of lockdown. Um, unbelievable yeah. struggle it would have been for yeah. so many so many places. So, you know, it is just nice to be back in that physical space and just have, you know, the opportunity to be able to provide people a, a place to come and do the thing that they really enjoy doing, you know, whatever game it might be, but just, you know, providing that safe and happy space for people to come and just enjoy. And um, I know we chatted up before we actually started recording, but what uh, TCGs are you mainly supporting in store? Like we spoke about play days before, so I guess tell us a little bit like what play days you do in Melbourne and yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff in store. Yeah, so for the most part, you know, Ma- Magic is our is our number one. It's uh, mm-hmm. myself and the, the three other owners all come from Ma- Magic the Gathering background, so, uh, you know, that's sort of our bread and butter. Yeah, we, we run Magic a few times a week, which is really popular. Then we also have Flesh and Blood, which is my jam these days. Mm. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Our Yu-Gi-Oh! community is fantastic. You know, get a get a strong showing every week on the Saturday for Yu-Gi-Oh! But we've got Digimon. Love my Digimon crowd as yeah. well. Like, yeah. Passionate, passionate crowd there. Really good bunch of Final Fantasy players come in. We've we hosted nationals for Final Fantasy this year, which was oh, cool. which, yeah, yeah. which was incredible to meet all the players from you know around Australia, which was really cool. And we're going to be hosting One Piece soon as well when, when that oh, yeah, finally drops. That's, yeah, it's yeah, just so, dropping soon. Yeah, yeah. It's just around the corner. So, yeah. yeah, looking forward to delving into that that space and, yeah, hoping to get Pokemon up and running as well. Like, it's been a bit hard to, to get that one off the ground, but, yeah, we're hoping that we can get Pokemon weekly events up and running as well, which would be really cool. Yeah, actually getting that player's market instead of, like, the vast majority of the collectors. Sort yeah, of thing. so so many collectors yeah. in, in the in the Pokemon game, so it would be, be nice to, uh, you know, get some back the other way and yeah. get some people playing. And Do you play Pokemon yourself? I have dabbled before. Yeah. Um, during lockdown, actually. I was dabbling online, yeah. Uh, yeah, playing, yeah. The, playing the online Pokemon, and, yeah, didn't, didn't mind it. It's... Uh, Bit of fun. Yeah. So, yeah, I can see people coming and having a good fun playing that one. So, yeah. yeah. Jack used to come over to mine and we used to get all the codes and stuff and we used to just basically just stream, like get it on the TV and just sit there and just drink and just play. Yeah. Play yeah. Online. Well, I got into it because during lockdown I went out and bought, I think like a lot of people went out and just bought some Pokemon boxes. I hadn't yeah. looked at Pokemon cards for years. Went out, bought a bunch of Pokemon boxes, and they all came with the code cards. I'm like, oh, what's all that all May about? Well they just them. jumped yeah, on yeah. and just started loading yeah. in code cards. And I was like, oh, yeah, there's a bit of fun. Yeah, so, yeah. so you <laughs> get like you get that second element of like thrill of opening another pack yeah, digitally it's like online double as dopamine. well. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get to fast through it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sick. And it like we used to have like a um it was when Evolutions was around. It would have been like early 2016? 2000. It was 2016. I think mm. me and Jack started playing on online maybe 2017, like maybe mid 2017. And we just like made a, a whole deck around like you know, like the Nidoo, you know, break cards. Yeah. Like yeah. Nidoo King break. And yeah. it's so like hard to like evolve those all those lines <laughs> yeah. and get through, particularly in that like era. It was a bit of a from memory anyway, it was like more of a slow paced sort of yeah. game. Yeah, no one else used the break card, but we just had like a half decent win rate for this totally left field deck. <laughs> yeah. It was great. It was awesome. Yeah, I guess have like having fun and doing what you want to do in the deck you want to build. So it's yeah. good. Obviously, we've established, like, what you guys are doing at the other POG. Yeah, the other POG. wonder where you got that inspiration <laughs> from. <laughs> so we actually bought him online to uh, hand him his, uh, uh, his papers to be sued. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. um, so tell me about, like, how you started in, like, TCG because you're obviously a magic man. Um, not the strip. No, <laughs> no not, not quite built but, um, <laughs> but, yeah, tell us a bit about what TCGs you used to play, your your background, what you did as a kid, yeah. all that sort of stuff. So I started collecting AFL cards at a young age with my dad. That was my first intro- mm. introduction to cardboard and then moved into Pokemon when everyone moved into Pokemon when it first dropped. So that was my first experience collecting, really. I didn't really play much Pokemon and then moved into Yu-Gi-Oh! when you know, the anime dropped here and everyone was scrambling for yeah. starter decks yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Me and my best mate at the time managed to get a couple of starter decks, which was which was really cool. What did you start with? Uh, I had Yugi. He had Kaiba. Yep. The old Summon Skull versus uh, yep. Blue Eyes who, who got there first sort of thing. So that was, that was always good fun. And then, yeah, moved into like competitive Yu-Gi-Oh from there. Played 
competitive Yu-Gi-Oh on and off for the next yeah, 10 years sort of thing. Uh, finished up that in early like 2010 sort of thing. Then started playing the World of Warcraft trading card game until yeah, right. until that okay. died. Yeah, they got rid of that when that was the thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> probably my favorite card game that I've ever played. Between that and Flesh and Blood, are my two favorite card games. I had a lot of fun playing the World of Warcraft TCG, but they got rid of. That's actually what my title is: the World of Warcraft oh, right. TCG. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, had a lot of fun playing that until they scrapped it when they brought out Hearthstone. So ah, uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And then it was a couple of years after that that I sort of found my way into Magic the Gathering. Played Magic the Gathering, yeah, for five years until COVID hit and then sort of stopped around COVID time as there was no real point for me to play as it was more of a competitive thing for me rather than yeah. like a fun thing. And then, yeah, found Flesh and Blood um, sort of during COVID. Really, really enjoyed it. So, yeah, I've been playing Flesh and Blood since yeah, mid-2021. Mm. Yeah. When it first started coming out, wasn't it? Like around I, just just on the press, in, of, like just before it COVID. Came right? just just co- just before COVID, yeah. which um, pretty insane to think came out just before COVID, and it's still strong. Like it's yeah. gone from strength to strength over the the three years that it's been out. Considering that two of them were under COVID lockdown. Yeah, because <laughs> I remember catching up with like a mate that I met on like the TCG community, um, Pat, and he. I uh, was telling me all about it, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna start like collecting these, and like you should do, totally do it as well." I'm like, "Oh yeah, really invested in both Pokemon. I'll keep doing that." And yeah. he's just like crushed it. Like he's got all these like OG cards, yeah. and like he just yeah did so well. And I just remember having coffee with him um, in Altham, and like yeah, just before lockdown and all that sort of stuff happened. Yep. And then it's just, it seemed, despite lockdown, it still popped off, uh, like, which is just incredible. It, I think it's a real testament to to the game itself yep. and the company that is producing it, Legend Story Studios. They're, a New Zealand company, right? Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah. And I'm stoked to see, like, a New Zealand company, yeah. like, you know, you know, Australia, New Zealand, yeah. basically their brothers, right, yeah. coming out with, like, a really, really cool TCG yeah, that's they, actually doing so, so, so well. They've done an amazing job with it. They do a great job of listening to the community and like mm. like really taking on player feedback. Yeah. Which I think is it's just a massive thing. And like, you know, it, it's it's easy for companies to, you know, just do their own thing and, you know, not take that on board. But mm. and you know, there can be a lot of noise coming from player bases and stuff like that. But I think it's really important to take some of that on board and, yeah. you know, figure out where you can do things better. And that's what they've done a great job of that. And yeah, yeah that's why they're going from strength to strength. I think yeah, it's obviously just... receptive and critical feedback is honestly the, the, the best type of feedback you yeah. can get as well. Yeah. Because it's just like cool. There's... It's needed for growth, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. How, how, so are gonna get, how are you going to get better if you, if you can't, you know, take on critical feedback and, yeah. you know, always strive to, to be better. That's, you know, yeah. that's how you get better <laughs> at yeah. anything. Yeah. No, they're crushing it. It's good. <clears throat> so, yeah. Cause I started out with, um, what year were you born? Uh, 1990. Yeah, yeah, I'm 94. Yeah. So I was like not that far apart. Yeah. Like we were just like you had probably been like a few. I remember <clears throat> Yu-Gi-Oh was big when I was in like year year two or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Used to like collect cards. It was in like, for me it was like grade six, year seven was when Yu-Gi-Oh started yeah. popping so off. Time's so, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was... And that, um, I, I remember I started off with the what, Pegasus deck. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then, yeah, Pokemon was a big thing. But yeah, like you said, nobody really, even back then, nobody really played Pokemon at school. Yeah. Well, yeah. Kids in the schoolyard played Pokemon, but yeah. none of them knew what they were doing. Like, they yeah, weren't actually yeah, yeah. playing Pokemon. They like, were just wasn't taken slapping seriously. cards on the ground. The, the, the <laughs> interest was, to me anyway, was primarily like, oh, look at these shiny charms. Exactly. Like, it was yeah. just like, yeah, that, yeah. That, I think that essence of nostalgia has like, never really gone away. I think that's why I like this, the collecting scene. Because it's like, like people our age now, like, actually, you know, older, we have careers or we have jobs where we can actually afford these shiny things. Yeah, So like exactly. back then where it's just like, Mom, buy me another boot pack. That's it. And she's yeah. just like, no, not this week. And it's just like, no, you didn't give me one last week. Yeah. Like, yeah. So we actually have money to like go out and, you know, buy yeah. those shiny things and actually relive that element of nostalgia, exactly. which is pretty cool. I think that's why Pokemon see, like, see such booms and stuff like yeah. that is because the just – that nostalgia. Volume. They know how to pull at it as well. They really like, do. They're throwing like, back like all the OG yeah. like reworks and all that yeah. sort of stuff. They're doing it in like a cool way um, for the most part, which is sick. Yeah. So I remember, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! Time's up like pretty much the same as yourself, like, you know, albeit four years, you know, age difference. And then, yeah, I remember getting like, ma- I remember Magic um, when that was sort of 
just becoming a thing. You used to get like promos in like K-Zone magazine and stuff. Yeah. I yep. got a promo in a K-Zone magazine and I just remember just being like reading it. There was just so much text on it. I was just like too much for little me to take yeah. on. Like, Cause I was like year yeah. two or something like that. This is too complicated. Switch complete and now, now Yu-Gi-Oh cards are the ones with all the text. Yeah, like, <laughs> like a paragraph of text. And I'm just unreal. like, I can't remember like that, let alone yeah. like all these different cards in my deck. Like the the minds that must go into like playing those games must be insane. Like yeah. it's just like a whole other element. Yeah. You yeah. is well above my uh, pay grade these days. It goes well over my yeah. <laughs> I can't understand what's going on with it's it. Hectic. It makes it so intimidating to actually like even attempt at like getting because you've got to make up yeah. so much ground. Yeah. I it's don't know like, where, I don't know where to begin. Yeah. You know. It's, it's just wild. Yeah. It's um there's so much going on with Yu Gi Oh these days that I'm just I'm, I'm, it's daunting to even think about yeah. <laughs> looking into. Even when you were teaching Jack before, like I, I, again, you probably nobody would have seen this because obviously off camera. But before we we started doing the podcast, um, Joel was teaching Jack um, how to play here. Um, and even when you were talking about stuff, then I was just in the background, just like <sighs> yeah. <laughs> straight away. You know, it's information overload at the start. It's it's so much to take in. So it's about like trying to break down what the most important parts of it, I guess, yeah. are. And then, you know, learning those basics and then going from there and building upon it. But yeah, it's 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 hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's really good. Hard. You were super articulate though. Like for Jack learning, like he was just like, yep, yep, done, done, done. Like a very the way you even teach is quite articulate. Um, I mean, what would you expect from having a person that what you won, you were in top eight? You won, didn't you? No, this, I came second. Came second, second right. At, um, at nationals, yeah, right? yep. yeah. How was that? How was nationals? Nationals was amazing. Yeah. Um, the highlight of my um, like TCG playing life. It was uh, got to live out a dream of like qualifying for a pro tour, which is super exciting. And um, I went into it with absolutely zero expectations. I'd been telling everyone around me like I hadn't played a game of Flesh and Blood for a month leading up to national. So I was like, I've got no practice. I'm not feeling confident at all. I was uh this guy. I was, I, I was <laughs> this I, guy. I was feeling I was feeling horrible because I just had no preparation whatsoever whatsoever. Um but I have some really good people around me. So they yep. Built the deck that I ended up playing for for nationals, and they wrote me out a sideboard guide. They wrote me out all the stuff and what what I need to do in each matchup, yeah, right. and yep. you know they gave me all the tools, and you know I was just fortunate enough to be able to be yeah. the one that you know converted. No preparation comes second. <laughs> a modest man here is Joel. <laughs> um, yeah, that was sick. I remember like you coming out of the uh, like the the room like where they were all playing. Obviously, just the biggest grin on your face. It was yeah. so wholesome. <laughs> He came out. I'm just like, yes, he's, he's done it. Yeah, <laughs> I was, I was, yeah, I was, yeah. I was stoked. It was, it was just a great weekend. Like, so many great people around as well. Yeah. It was, um, the vibe was really good. Like the was, people. I, if again, for those that don't know, we set up a small stall at nationals, and yeah, like just the vibe was really good. Everybody was super friendly. Everyone was getting along. You know, it's always a lot easier when you're winning. But I think even if I hadn't been winning that week, and I still would have had a great time because yeah. it was just like, yeah, it was. There was not a single opponent I played that weekend where I, I didn't have a a good time against that opponent. You know, I had just great games all weekend and just, yeah, friendly opponents. And it was yeah, a real, real thrill yeah. to, to be part of that sort of thing. It's, yeah, good. It's really nice. Um, and unfortunately, uh, as we were discussing before, you didn't end up going to America for that. That No, I didn't didn't go over for Worlds. Uh, it would have been really cool to go for the first Worlds uh, for Flesh and Blood, which was quite appealing. But, uh, you know, having just opened up a – store you know not even six months ago it's sort of not the best timing and I didn't feel like I could put in the effort required to be competitive at that event so yeah. I was that all or nothing I, approach hey? yeah, yeah. I, you know I've played card games a, a very long time to hit that goal of like being able to compete at a at a pro tour or you know a worlds or whatever it might be to reach that goal and then not be able to give that my all I didn't want that to be my my first experience at like a, you know, top level sort of thing. So I, I decided it would be best to give that a miss this time around. And then with Flesh and Blood, you earn pro tournament invites. So you can use them for any pro tournament you like. So mm -hmm. next pro tour gets announced uh, very shortly, I think. So we'll see where that one is. And um, if it's somewhere I'll feel like traveling to and I can make the, the time, time what sort of work and put in, put in some work. On practice, then um, yeah, then we'll aim for that sort of thing. But um, yeah, 
for the time being, it's just uh, need things things need to settle down with work yeah, a bit before I yeah, can yeah, uh, yeah. get back to a bit of a personal life. Yeah, it would have been pretty audacious, like just opening up a card shop and then just going to America as well. Because yeah. how big is your team? Uh, so we're about to expand at the moment to uh, six of us on on the staff, which is yep. which is pretty exciting. It's the growth has come a lot quicker than we're expecting. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, with growth becomes, you know, you need more hands on deck to, to make things run smoothly. So yeah, we're, we're looking at expanding our team currently. Um, so yeah, we'll be at six people pretty shortly, which is really good and should open it up a bit more to get more of a, you know, work life balance back again and yeah, hopefully get back playing some games. Yeah. Again, it's just like, it's good to uh, like avoid burnout and stuff as well. Like as a business owner, like oh, I never really thought about it too hard until like this year. Cause I run too. I run this in like a small body piercing you know, shoot studio. Yep. Yeah. Like just lately, like it's just with everything's going on, like, you know, just done Black Friday, just already in here working yeah. flat out, you know, like I can only imagine how hard it would have been to leave that for two weeks because that's going to also like, be on your brain when you're over there exactly. as well. Like you're not going to be over there just thinking about the game. You'd be like, oh, my business back home. I Hopefully, you know, yeah. everything's good. We're not going to get thrown into a third, fourth, fifth lockdown, you know, yeah. Yeah. all that sort of stuff. And like I've got a great team behind me. So like, I, you know, I can I can trust them to get the job done, but then it's not going to stop me from constantly thinking about. Yeah, it's your baby. You know, yeah. you know, it's, it's something I've wanted my entire life, you know, to, to open a card store. So to reach that goal, I want to put my all into it. Yeah. But yeah, it's just means that you have to give in other areas of life. Yep. So, and that, that, you know, that's a sacrifice that we're willing to make. And hmm. yeah. That's how I look at it. It's like, it is always going to be like, everybody needs to look at things as glass half full. So it's just like, yes, you, there's certain things that you're not going to be able to do as, as a business owner, yeah. like with those commitments and you know, you're going to miss out on that portion. But also as a business owner, you get to experience all these awesome things that you are only going to be able to experience by owning that shop that, you know, yeah. feeling a lifelong dream, like actually yeah. being really entrenched in like that community play as well. Like as a, sort of looking at a glass half full, like it's pretty fulfilling or I imagine it'd yeah. be pretty fulfilling for you. I so mean, it's good. I, I tell everyone, you know, that when they ask me, it's like work doesn't feel like work. I go, I go every day. Yeah. Doesn't feel like I'm at work. I, I I genuinely enjoy being where I am every day. Um, I'm tired. I, you know, yeah. the days are long. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's always something to do. It's it's taxing, but the the joy is still there, which is you know, that that comes from the passion of being yeah. around people that have that same passion that you have, and you know mm. that you know you feed off their energy, and you, you just you know being in that environment day in day out, it's just it's worth the the effort that you're putting in to, to make it happen sort of thing. So uh, I think, you know, if I had my time again, I'd do, do the exact know, same keep, thing. Keep, <laughs> keep, keep doing what we're doing. So yeah, yeah there's, it's been hard work so far and it will continue to be hard work, but it's worth every, everything, you know, it's yeah, just good. great. Yeah. Yeah. Proud of you, dude. That's really, really good. Exactly. You know, particularly not feeling like work. I think that's where everybody should be at or aspire to be at. Yeah. You know, so that's fantastic. On the topic of cards that we've been talking about for the last like 30 minutes, mm. um, we're going to open some packs as well. Oh, yeah. um, so Joel's bought some packs, uh, booster boxes, I believe. Do uh, have awesome. a couple of booster boxes for us to open. Now you're going to have to guide me on the flesh and blood because like Jack will bef- – not like Jack anymore. He knows, he knows Flesh and Blood <laughs> yeah. now, but I... Jack, Jack's I, an expert now. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know he's been trained by the way. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you're going to have to guide me on what's good because I'll just look at it and be like, shiny, probably good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, guide me on that. This I'm, right. I'm well you're, versed you're, in. You're going to be uh, all over I'm on Pokemon. So you're going to you're gonna have to get, gonna you're gonna get, um, get excited for me on the Pokemon side of things. So Well, all right. Well, why don't we tuck into... Just tuck in a bit of Flesh and Blood first. Flesh and Blood first? Yeah. Where are you going to recommend? Oh, some premium... Palms of gaming gear. <laughs> I heard they're pretty good dudes. How much can I get them for? They look really good. Money. <laughs> uh, a POG uh, sleeves. Not your POG, you imposter. No. <laughs> no. Um, Palms of gaming uh, soft sleeves. They are very cheap. Uh, they're dollar what? Dollar seventy five, I think. They're less, depending on the sale. Depending on the sale, there. 
And some pounds of gaming top loads, 35 points. Oof. Ooh. So, Premium protection for your beautiful TCGs and the awesome pools that we're going to be getting today. Well, let's hope we open something worth putting in there. It's like papery, hey. Yeah, they've got paper packs. Yeah, right. Yeah. They look nice. They are they nice. Look super premium. They're easy to open, which is always great. Let's tuck in, I guess. So garbage first up. So, you know, that's, <laughs> that's where you want to start. I feel right at home. <laughs> that's right, you know. If all the packs were good, there'd be nothing to get excited about. So, Oh, much easier to open. This is yeah, lovely. It's How nice is it? This is a much more satisfying <laughs> feeling. It's great. Is there any like um we have Pokemon's like uh three or four from the back these days? Uh so the last two cards or three cards in these would generally be the good ones. Okay. But then there's also like for this set specifically, there's new class, which is the assassin. So there can be assassin cards in the assassin slot. So yep. the, yeah, it can be in a few different slots in the pack. So Yeah, right. Uh but generally towards the back is where we're where we're moving towards. Yeah, cool. Got our first majestic, which is uh, not a great one, but it's it's something. It's something. So, what's uh, what you would define as like the chase card in this sort of box? Uh, so, the number one thing we're looking for is the fabled version of Command and Conquer. Yep. Uh, you'll see a few Command and Conquers when you watch uh, Jack and I I've playing heard, some heard games. That. Yeah, you yeah, would have heard Command and Conquer yep. a few times. A few so. damn times. Yeah. Uh, we would like to get the the big shiny version of that one, which would be nice. Yep. Uh, outside of that, there's um, new boots for the assassin. They're also great. Mm hmm. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can uh, find one of those two, which would be nice. Uh, there are a ton of really cool things in this set, though. So hopefully we can find something shiny. I have uh, opened for my personal collection five boxes of this stuff so far, and I am yet to open anything of worth. So <laughs> it, is, it has been quite miserable for me thus far. But so we have a cold foil. It's a pretty cool one. In flesh and blood, they do. There's the regular rainbow foils and there's cold foils. Yep. So this, like the cold foils are the, the fancy versions, I guess. Yeah, right. You so, can even see some texture. Yeah, and so stuff this on one, there. we'll actually sleeve this one up. Got that one. So it's only a rare, so it's not, not the best, but it's, you know, still pretty cool. Hopefully we can open up some of the alt art cards or something along those lines would be nice. Nervous how satisfying paper packs are to open. They're, they're so much better. Like they're just less fiddly. Yeah, there's always like, like, you don't have to the, worry about like just niggling at it. Yeah, you know, there's to try the argument and get it open. between like do the cards get damaged in the paper packs? And in my experience that I haven't had many cards come out of a flesh and blood pack damaged. Yeah, so, so no more than any other. TCG. Yeah, like see. people, like the only argument I can really see is, oh, like water or something like that. But like, you're not going to like. Yeah, I mean, if water's going near if water's cars, going, anyway, yeah. you're going to have you're, a bad that's time. The first problem. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's the truth was the problem, you yeah. know. But the, I remember when um, I had those uh, McDonald's promotional packs, they had some sticking and stuff with the with the paper packs, but you don't get this with yeah. these at all. No, they're, um, they're like really well made. They're, they're, yeah. They do a great job of them. I'm just amazed they've got that really, really nice foily sort of look to them. Yeah, they're, you know, seen them. They are, they are really nice. Yeah, the first few sets, um, they had like plastic packs, but then they decided, you know, Ultimately, to yeah. go the environmentally uh, friendly route and uh, whip out the paper packs. And I think it's as a general thing, it's been really well received. Yeah, by the community. I mean, it's an industry like that's something that we discuss constantly. Um, like Nick's in the background, I usually discuss this sort of stuff with him. And it's like we're in an in industry that's like, you know, like the whole world is in this environmental sort of sustainability project, which I wholeheartedly agree with. Yeah. But then we're in this industry that is just primarily dominated by plastics. Yeah. And it's just like, how can we make this? Like, yeah. And the issue comes is like, oh, there's like, it's going to be archival friendly. And a part of that is it not degrading yeah and that just goes against against everything the whole that, like you know <laughs> it's just wild so it's, yeah. it's a really hard um, balance to strike yeah um, really hard balance to strike you know you just do what you can you did you mention there was a couple of cards in here that you yourself are chasing as well yeah there's a few cards in here that i'm after i mean the assassin the assassin boots would be nice mm -hmm. uh the assassin mask even um most of the assassin cards really just because it's a new set a uh, new class and yep i don't have most of the cards for and be interested in in trying to play the assassin at some point. Um, 
There's also the new crown that just came out, which is uh, an interesting card. It's uh, on paper, it doesn't look that interesting, but I know a few people are uh, trying out different builds with the with the new crown and trying some do some fancy stuff. So it's yep. uh, yeah, it's one that I wouldn't mind uh, mucking around with. Hey, here we go. That's it. it. This Very so cool. this is a. Uh, they call them marvels these days. Mm. Bring that one up to the camera. So it's the uh, the ranger weapon, the bow, in the Marvel version. So these are these are actually pretty rare. The um they come in maybe once a case, once every two cases. Yeah, right. So, cool. Um, really, really cool pull. Not exactly sure if it's going to be the weapon of choice for the rangers at this point. Um, mm -hmm. Rangers have a few good options to to go through, but uh, it could definitely see definitely see play in the ranger deck. So. Really awesome pull that Pretty one. Pretty good. Just as you said, like, oh, yeah, no, it's all right. Uh, <laughs> done all right. He's the most <laughs> modest man ever. Like, oh, I didn't prepare for this tournament. Second. Oh, I'm not good <laughs> at opening packs. No luck. Bang. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay at some things sometimes, I guess. So you're more than okay. Pretty damn good. <laughs> I like the detail on, like, the, the backs. Like, just the artwork on the actual back of the cards. I really think, cool. I think Flesh and Blood in general has some of the nicest artwork yeah. out of all the TCGs, it's um, some of it's just phenomenal. It's catering more to like an adult audience. Like there's a lot of yeah, gore and stuff like it. that, which yeah. you know, uh, you know, I'm an adult, so that's why I, I, I like that sort if of stuff. If the shoe um, fits, yeah, I think I think they do a fantastic job with the art and not like you know, not trying to censor that sort of stuff. You know, it's yeah, the, the some of the cards are brutal. That's that's what they're meant to be. Yeah, you know, sort yeah, of yeah, thing. exactly. Um, right. Thanks, so. sir. Last two packs. Well, we've already uh. Already struck gold though, so yeah, even that one, yeah, so brutal. Yeah, I think I'll see if I can find one. One of the cards that make me laugh the most is just a guy getting his leg cut off, which is yeah, right. <laughs> like, every time I see it, it just makes me laugh. It's just a, there, it is. yeah, cool. Yeah, it's just a leg <laughs> off. I don't know if we can get that. <laughs> All right, last two packs. See what we can see. Nothing fancy on my end, unfortunately. No. But got the uh, got the bow, so that's get the bow, and then awesome. we get the Giratina in here, and that's, that's it. That's we got, what we'll got do. the Giratina left to come, so that's that's it. We'll tuck into that a little bit later. It's cool. Now, um, one of the guys that was showing me, there's like certain, there's like little letters and stuff like plugged in um, to this artwork, and you have to go onto a microscope to like see it and stuff. That was showing me because PCG had a store set up. And yeah, they were showing me and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's really intricate. It's yeah. cool. That's some Rate really it. cool stuff. Mm. They are, they're doing a good job. They're doing a really good job, yeah. and the product's exciting to open. Like it's, uh, you know, with with these sort of like alt art. Marvels that they have in the boxes. It's sort yeah. of brought a real excitement when you open the packs. You yeah, know, it's almost like a really <laughs> regal vibe to it as well with like all of the intricacies around the border and stuff. Yeah, so the, the different borders on the cards actually like depict what, what class what they're class, for. Yeah, yeah. Which is, um, which is really cool. Mm. So you Magic the Gathering team. Back to the questions. So you we're pretty much heavily in, like like you said before like heavily into magic the gathering before the whole covid lockdown thing right so yep. um that is called the faction yeah that's correct um yeah. and how's that going like are you still playing a lot of magic or is that, do they come to the store a lot yeah so uh we get there's a really awesome group of guys uh all, all melbourne crew sort of thing I've been a part of that since I think 2018 mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, they asked me if I'd wanted to be a part of it and it's just it's just a good excuse for a, a group of awesome people to get together and uh, have a good time drinking beers, playing mm -hmm. playing magic. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, just, so, <laughs> uh, that's um yeah, it's I've been a part of that for yeah, what 40, four or five years now and it's um it's just a lot of fun really. Like just just really good people. I don't play as much magic these days, but um we run events every year. So we've got the the faction invitational and the fac faction champs every year. So um I always get along to those events because they're always a blast. We we uh, rent out like a um Airbnb 
somewhere yeah, cool. that can yeah. house like 20 people and we just yeah, spend the whole weekend playing cards, uh, Drink beer, drinking beers, cards, yeah. swimming, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You always got a pool and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah and um, we all like donate prizes to the prize pool sort of yeah. thing. So it's always a really cool experience and uh, mm-hmm. bragging rights to go along with it all. So, yeah, um, cool. Yeah, we do like a player of the year and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's uh gives people a reason to get out and play play events and stuff like that. So it's nice that competitive magic's coming back now because a lot of the guys had, had been missing that. So it's nice to have them back out there competing. And there was actually just this weekend past, there was a uh, the ANZ Super Series um, in Sydney, the the final for that. And we had a few of a few of our guys go up there for that, which, which yep. was really cool. Didn't quite get the results they were looking for, but, you know, they, they had strong finishes and yeah, uh, cool. it was nice to just – you know, follow them all week. Have you know, have people to follow even when you when you're not a part of it yourself. You've got people that you can you can back and yeah. Now it's nice to be part of something that's like bigger than yourself. And yeah. you know, um, yep. you're not gonna do well at every tournament you go to. So it's nice to have someone else there to to support to support when you're when it's not your day. It's someone else's day. You know. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Just as wholesome. Yeah, so like over the how when was that established? It was joined in you joined in 2018. That was the established date. No, like they year, or they, they they've been around for a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not actually sure exactly when they all got together. Um, yeah, there's yeah a few a few of the uh, old guard that have been doing it for quite some time. I think it's an older game, right? Yeah, yeah. It's been yeah. For so so long. Um, I know like some of the guys in the faction. They've been playing Magic since you know. I would have I would have been running around in nappies pretty yeah, much yeah. when they were they were playing magic. So um no you know, they got the old guard there that um they've been playing a long time and then a lot of us, you know, newer sort of players, I'm like I guess in the middle group of like mm. not quite the old guard, but not one of the young uns. Yeah. You know? so, <laughs> I'm in the middle somewhere, but um yeah. but no, they've they've been around playing um playing magic forever. Uh, I think the faction was established. 2015, 2016, okay. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so not a whole nah. heap of length of time before you started. Yeah, in so yeah, so yeah. um, but now they've been they've been running these these events and stuff for since since they sort of established and which just got bigger and bigger every yeah. every year, which has been awesome. And you know, it was hard during COVID because we had to sort of like schedule things around, you know, lockdowns and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But we ended up making it work and still still got to run our events, you know. How did how did you do it during lockdown? So we got to run one of them. It, it was in between the lockdowns. We got to run one of them. So we we sort of you know made everyone do COVID tests before entering the house that we were staying at. No one could enter without doing a COVID test before yep. before we came in and stuff like that. And um, yeah, we were like just really safe with it. Unfortunately, some of the guys missed out because they ended up getting COVID. You know, the mm-hmm. week of. So we had to, a few of the guys had to miss out. It's you know we made the best of a bad better, situation. Better couple missing yeah, out exactly. than everybody, you yeah, know. So, so. We, we did what we could and to make that still happen, sort of thing. Yeah. And then, like the faction invitational and stuff. That's that's where we invite not necessarily just players from the faction. We invite, you know, other community members yeah. and stuff like that that have you know contributed to the, towards the faction and stuff like that and helped mm-hmm. out with stuff and you know, we invite them to that tournament as well so they can be a part of you know. What, nice bit of inclusivity. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, it's one of those things where I think they go, the guys who are at the top sort of thing, they go to a lot of effort to make sure that everyone who is part of it is of the same sort of mindset, you know, like good people to be around sort of thing. So it's um you don't want to, you know, ruin that with uh, any bad egg sort of thing. But um, mm. uh, it's just a really great chance to get people together and like-minded people together and, yeah, just, have a good time. Mm. No, rad. So what's on the horizon for plenty of games? Do you have any project coming up? I know you're talking about trying to get more Pokemon-related tournaments involved. Do you have any? Because our audience is primarily Pokemon. Yeah. So who knows? Yeah. They might be like, oh, I would, plenty, plenty of games. Yeah. My, my other pog doing, doing yeah, tournaments. Yeah. Better go. <laughs> I actually, it was funny. Funny. I just wrote out like a list of my goals for like quarter one of you know yeah. next year. And yeah, poke, getting Pokemon off the ground is is high on that list of goals for the next next sort of quarter. We really want to you know expand in that area. One Piece, like I said before, just around the corner. So hope, mm. hoping we can get right into that, have a strong scene from the start, and continue building that. 
I think just building our other card games in general that aren't Magic, um, building up those communities and like listening to them and what their needs are because, you know, it's, it can be hard for us to, to, to know exactly what they want uh, not being from those communities. Um, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's hard to cater to communities that you, that you're not necessarily a part of and you, you don't know exactly what they're looking for. So, um, yeah, it's, it's about, you know, really taking on the feedback from, from them and like getting, getting better with the, like the, um, engagement with the different communities and, and really taking on their feedback and, and yeah, in, in, making that a part of what we do sort of thing. Yeah. So do you have a couple of people from like those, like, you know, play groups essentially yeah, that so, sort of come and liaison and comm that sort of feedback with you? Yeah. So recently we've just, um, like we started a, had a Facebook group started with some of the Yu-Gi-Oh community members and they were like, yeah. oh, can we add some of the staff members to, to the, um, like our local community group? I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, get us in there. And like, you know, it, it's great for us to, to get a feel of like, you know, what, what they're looking for and, what they want so you know hopefully we can use that as a stepping stone to to continue to build up you know what exactly what they're looking for out of their local game store so, yeah cool and you know and not just cater to them but to cater to everyone else as well we're like mm-hmm. looking to get more into like the war games and stuff like that and provide a space for you know we've got a bunch of players that come in and play um kill team and stuff like that mm-hmm. so um catering to more, more towards them as well um you know giving them better tables and better space to, to play their to play their games and like expanding our product range where we can provide them with um product as well is, is another another big thing for us um, in the coming months sort of thing. So yeah so just mainly like pretty essentially what I'm hearing is like a lot of fine tuning. Which yeah. I guess is quite normal like for a, a relatively you know new established newly yeah. established store. I, I so. think for the most part we've got our heads around the big picture stuff to a degree. Yeah. I think it's been a lot of like finding our feet in the first, you know, six months that we've been open. It's a lot of getting used to things that we just didn't know were even even a thing before we yeah, got into. Yeah, you weren't even like aware thing. of it. Didn't yeah, even think. I didn't yeah. know that was a thing. You'd be that. surprised at the amount of that sort of stuff. It's, you come in and you start unreal. doing everything. You're just like, oh, I didn't think about this. Yeah, so. <laughs> there's so many things yeah. like that. I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't didn't know that was a thing. Okay, mm-hmm. yep. And especially the first two months was just like, okay, yep. Yeah. Another another ten things to think about. So what what caught you by like most surprise? Um, the thing that caught me by most surprise and, and is still catching me by surprise. I need to get better at it. Is just how many sets release of all the different games. Like there is something yeah. coming out every second week for something, and how far in advance you order those things. Yeah. So it's like I remember the first the first couple of months. Like I had people asking me, oh. You have any, whatever it might be. I'm like, didn't even know What's that? that? Didn't even know that was out. <laughs> I am yeah. so sorry. I didn't know that was out yet. So, gotten a lot better at getting ahead of those sort of things. Mm. Um, but still want to get better. You know, still keep getting better at it because yep. it's um, just keep releasing stuff and yep. it's just so yeah, much I, to I keep think, up with. <laughs> wouldn't that be like a, a big thing as well with like comms too? Because like, um, with so many delays happening now as well. Yeah. So like, is that is that across the board, or is that like? Because I know we we experience it like you know importing our stuff as well. It's it's hard like to to be around like all these logistical delays, particularly if stuff's coming by sea. So are you yeah. copying that across the board? Uh, in some areas, yeah. Like it, it's some. There's been our supplies have been really good. Like with uh, with most things, it's you know a lot of the time it's unfortunately out of their hands anyway. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah. you know it, it is what it is. But um. They've been they've been pretty good at you know relaying you know expected dates and stuff like that. There've been just some things that have just you know been delayed, 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 and it's mm. frustrating for us. It's frustrating for you know consumers. It's what we live in now, like hey. it, But it, you know, I think at the end of the day, everyone sort of understands that that's yep. we've been conditioned you know, to accept that in the last two what, years. What, what can we do about it? Unfortunately, it, yeah. it is what it is. Um, these things are going to happen. Um, we'll get them when we get them sort yeah. of thing. So, um, but no, for the, for the most part, the releases have been pretty smooth. We had, um, we had magic, uh, pre-release the other week, which was nearly a disaster. Yeah, <laughs> but, right. Uh, what happened? Uh, so we had, we had ordered our stock and everything and it was, uh, shipped on the Monday, supposed to get there on the Wednesday for pre-release on Friday night. 
Wednesday rolls around, it's not there. Thursday rolls around, it's not there. And I was on the train on the way in on Friday and I was pretty confident. I'm like, no, nah, it'll, it'll come today. I think we'll be fine. Yep. Uh, we get there and there'd been a, sorry, we missed you note slipped under the door. Uh, and it's the first time they haven't just left the stock at, the, like, you know, left the stock yeah. at the door sort yeah. of thing. And I'm like, oh. So Let's go pick it up I from was the depot. Like, oh, God. And then, like, so I was ringing, ringing, ringing. I'm like, you know, can can this get delivered today? They're like, oh, we've put a message out to the driver. Let's see if you can get it back out to you today. Didn't He's not coming back. And then I'm like, oh, well, can I come pick it up? They're like, no, it's not back at the depot yet. And I'm like, what's going on? And then eventually we got to the point where Isaac, one of the other owners, he's like, I'm just driving out to the depot. I, we, haven't, we don't know if it's there or not yet, but I'm just driving out there to see if we can get it. So he ends up getting there. Uh, they say, yeah, it's back here now. But um, but they don't know where it is, so they're they're running they're around looking around. for it. Yeah. They, they don't know where it is. They're looking. For, they finally find it. Isaac gets back to the store uh, at five to seven. And we're just kicking off at seven o'clock. So I just literally yeah, just got right. the stock yeah. in the door <laughs> as we're also kicking off the. That's some commitment, though. That's such commitment from a store owner. I love it. Like, oh uh, yeah, no, I'm just driving the depot. I'll yeah. wait. You know, just put the pressure on. Yeah, that's we, great. Yeah, I, I think I spent like three hours on the phone that day to yeah. to various uh, people, like just trying to get this yep. package. Um, but now that we've stuck the uh, "sorry we missed you" card up on the wall. <laughs> it's forever etched. Just in, framed it. Yeah, forever <laughs> etched in our <laughs> memories. That's my trauma. Yeah, uh. yeah, exactly. It was a, it was a day that was probably I was saying to the guys, I'm like, this is probably the worst day of work I've ever had. But it ended up being like one of the best because it was like we had seventy one people turn up for pre release. That's and cool. The event like went off without a hitch after yeah. that. It was just like, just such a great. Event. Pressure, pressure makes diamonds. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. There was plenty of pressure that day. So no, it was the good. best VS one grade diamond you'll ever see. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's good as. So that is, would that be like what leads into probably one of my next questions is like what some of the highlights you've had in the hobby over so many years, like that as particularly being a new st store owner, like a lot of pressure there, like that would have been quite rewarding, particularly, you know, having made satis like having satisfied 71 people for a pre-release. Yeah, I mean, but what other huge. notable sort of things have you had, you know, not only as a store owner, but leading up through your whole TCG history? Yeah, I think it's funny. I think like, this year has probably been the most satisfying year of, I mean, it could be the most satisfying year of my life when I go back and think about it. I've, I've lived out so many dreams this year yeah. that it's, um, I have to pinch myself sometimes because it's like, you know, it all doesn't seem real. Like if I had, if you had told me five years ago, I'd be, you know, running a store that I am a part owner of and, um, you know, qualified for a pro tour of <laughs> for flesh and blood. I, I, wouldn't have believed you sort of thing like it's uh yeah. so yeah I've, I've got to tick so many boxes this year but i think like it's not just like seeing seeing those results it's like the journey as a whole is like you know mm. you, you got to put yourself out there and, and risk risk everything to to get those rewards so you know it's been plenty of failures <laughs> along the way that you know at the time they look like low light sort of thing but you could look back on them and say hey no that's like that's a turning point that's where i like you know, changed my mindset towards certain things. Cause I know for a long time I used to get very down on myself after poor performances and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at a certain point that just clicked with me. It's like, you know, don't worry about mistakes. Don't, you know, don't dwell on that sort of stuff. Just focus on the stuff that's ahead of you. And yeah, so that mind mindset shift sort of thing. So I think that, you know, embracing those low lights over the journey leads to the highlights that I've had this year sort of thing. So just the just the time spent with friends over the years is and the people I've met through all these these great games and stuff like that. I think that would be the the number one highlight out of everything, to be honest. I've got so many lifelong friends now that I've met. Yeah. Um I mean so many this year and then yeah throughout the years that, you know, have become just really important people in my life. So uh, it's right. with without these games I would have never met probably any of them. Yeah. So it's uh it's pretty pretty incredible to think that I've met so many great people just from doing the thing that I enjoy doing. So that's great. Yeah, I feel like you're always going to succeed at something that you're passionate about rather than what you've been forced to to sort of go into. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like you've obviously found what makes you extremely happy. So, yeah, yeah I think we're all pretty proud of you. 
to, to have that. achieved it, particularly now having discussed it in a little bit more depth. It's really, really wholesome to be like have a person that's so passionate about what they do and just being like, I'm riding high. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. good, man. Like really, really good. So um stoked for you um, and your business partners as well. We got a question here. How much do you think you spent on the hobby? <laughs> We've got that this written down. Ooh. I couldn't even tell you. It's a question that's written down here, but I couldn't tell you. Um, I couldn't tell you how much I've spent. It's just too much. I, I, uh, next question. I don't want to think yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't give you an accurate number, but it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it is a lot. It's a land the, the, uh, <laughs> the, the problem with uh, trading card games, it's, they're expensive to be competitive. Yeah. And yeah. I think if it's – I was talking to someone about this the other day. I think our – industry almost has like this innate protection because like obviously there's certain things that you can't really help like if people come in and just bulk grade cards you know with the third-party authentication services and all that sort of stuff but if you really want to like build a business around tcg it's not gate kept i feel like but it's like you have to know what you're doing and know those communities nobody can just sort of roll in off the street and just slam down a million bucks and open a store and have Very it succeed difficult. yeah so Very i think difficult to do that yeah so, yeah so i think that's awesome because it's not yeah not gate kept per se but it's just innately protected by sort of this element of education behind yeah. it and you're not going to get edu no one's going to sit down and learn all of this stuff if they're not passionate about yeah. it, there's so much information surrounding every single TCG. And, you know, you're already sort of saying that, oh, and we're going to, you know, we're using, you know, we've got people coming back reporting to me what they want and what they need as well. And you've got obviously that element of empathy there with you and concern and sort of um, willingness to embrace those particular sub communities as yeah. well. Um, so I can really rate like, you know, store owners like yourself because, I'll, yeah, I've never really met any store owner that really isn't passionate about multiple tcgs if not you know one two I don't three. think you can be in the game without having some sort of mm. like passion for it i just yeah. i don't you find maybe, maybe maybe there is maybe yeah. there maybe there are some out there but i uh, i just i couldn't imagine doing this and not being passionate about it because yeah. if i was putting in this much work into something i didn't care about or mm. like wasn't you know didn't want to give my whole you know self to I, I can't imagine how you how you could do that because yeah. it's it's so much work. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then yeah, if you're not getting that that side of it out, you know, as a reward out of it, you know, where you you get that fulfillment. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you could do it. I yeah. really don't. It's um, yeah. I think you can make far more money doing something else that you do care about. It yeah. just seems like a silly place to 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 put your money if you're not yeah. passionate about it because it's not like it's uh you know you're not making millions or anything doing it it's it's the love of it that that keeps you going sort of thing so yeah that's why i always have the best conversations with the yeah, store owners or people that you know frequent stores or collectors that collect trading cards passionately is because you can really easily just be like genuine and genuine like sort of stuff so that's no, awesome we're gonna open some pokemon now let's get into it yeah left or right side what do you want Oh, right side, actually. Right side? Yeah. Just move around. Yeah. <laughs> so you open a lot of Pokemon yourself? Um, not, not really. a whole lot. Um, I did during COVID. I opened a ton during COVID. Um, really, really enjoyed, you know, getting back into it during that time. What did you open mainly in um, COVID? I got back into it when Darkness Ablaze was the current set. Yeah. So I opened a, a ton of Darkness Ablaze and uh, Vivid Voltage, which I think was oh, yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Uh, opened a ton of those, um, collected like master sets of, of those. At yeah, the time right. And I had a lot of fun with that. And then I actually started like buying and selling Pokemon cards during that time. So I, I got really right back into it. Like just, yeah, really enjoyed doing it. And then – I sort of took a step back recently where I'm like, I'm not going to bother too much with the newer stuff. I'm just going to go back and I'm currently collecting a uh, PSA 10 first edition Gym Challenge and Gym Heroes set. So I've been working on that one. Very expensive uh, goal. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> How much have you spent on this hobby? Too mm, much. Yeah. <laughs> More to come. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
little VMAX first up. Oh, hell yeah. Cure him. Mad. Cure him. Must have got a hit out of the first pack. Always, the first pack magic. Well, this is a good feel. Right side, see? I told you. Oh, right side. So <laughs> modest. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Terrible luck. Terrible luck. Yeah. <laughs> if you just complain about everything, <laughs> you're ple- pleasantly surprised when things go well. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so who watch um, some dodgeball? Mm. I find if you never have, if you have a goal, you mm. might not reach it. <laughs> Better not you don't, you better not because you're never disappointed. <laughs> exactly. See? Oh, Roserade, sick. Nice. Yeah. I do like that they've gone back to the uh, the trainer gallery stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just gives less feels bad when you're opening packs uh, yeah. with more hits, you know. And Roserade's probably one of my favorite grass Pokemon. Yeah. It's probably a brave call, but. <laughs> That's very brave. Yeah. I reckon it's sick. You're doing the trick, are you? Sorry? You're doing the trick to the back? To yeah. The back. Yeah, you always... I did that with uh, Dragon Ball so far with the Soul of the Saiyans. Me and Jack were a bunch of pre-release kits. Yeah. And um, last pack of the last pre-release kit, I got the Meteoric Energy. Um, Machido, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. It was like the pretty much the Chase Sig card. Nice. Like and it was like last card, last pack. It was just... Awesome. That's what it's all about. No better feeling. Thrill of the chase. That's it. I actually opened some. I'd never opened Dragon Ball Super Packs at all until the other week. Yeah. Um, and I ended up opening a couple of boxes. Do you like them? It's a lot of fun. Like so shiny. So it's, it's, yeah. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. So everything looks like it's cool. So it's like yeah. Even even the the stuff that's not that. And just good. the super rares. They're just like brutal. Yeah. Just the mate quality on them is sick. They made it made in Japan. Yeah. They're so on the ball when it comes to like quality. Yeah. Like car quality. A lot of nostalgia crazy. there for me as well. You know, yeah. watching watching Dragon Ball Z growing up and stuff. It's a uh, it's a cool one. Do you watch Super? Didn't watch Super. I haven't watched yeah. it. You should definitely. Watch it. Yeah. Watch Super. Just come over here. We'll watch it. It's fine. Well, uh, I have to get into it. Yeah, it's sick. Um, really rate it. Tornado it, Power as well. Is it like a lead on from? Dragon Ball Z, or is it its own sort of standalone? Pretty, yeah, pretty much. It's it's not like it's canon, like yeah. all of its canon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just keeps building on. Like he's gonna get a new transformation this storm. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> whoever the new big bad guy is, uh, yeah, we need much. a new transformation this time yeah. around. Who, whose turn is it? Yeah, <laughs> and they keep dogged by Boy Vegeta. <laughs> like every chance. Never number one. Oh hell yeah, dude! What do we get? Uh, I just a V star, but I like Giratina. So. <laughs> nice, nice. Any Giratina is sick for me. Hell yeah, love that. One thing I hate about opening Pokemon packs is the the code cards, how they're coloured. Yeah, so on you the know if you're getting a hit. And if I get a glimpse of the code card before I've opened the pack, it makes me so sad. Yeah, it kills me. <laughs> Gallery as well. Yeah. Yeah. Really do like the trainer gallery cards. They're uh, yeah. really cool. Nice. Like Spirit Tomb sick. That looks sick. What do we got? Oof. Oh, card. Very nice. Nice. Stadium card. Lap Stadium. See how that would work in a couple of different Loves. I actually love these. Gold cards Gold and stuff. Cards. Yeah. They look so sick. Gold and the rainbows. They look so sick. Yeah. Pokemon do a great job of uh, the foils. Just the texture on them as well. It's really good. Yeah, I like that textured feeling. Magic actually just started doing a few textured cards as well oh, really? for the first time, which yeah. is uh, interesting. Do you rate them? They're not bad. They're not as good as the Pokemon ones. I think the Pokemon texture cards are much nicer, but mm. they do a pretty decent job for their first time around sort of thing doing them. Okay. Nice. It's kind of a new game. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's an altar. Yeah. And that was, yeah, I think it came out. Um, that Pokemon came out with, I think it's Legends, the recent, one of the more recent games. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. Well, it's like, um, I think like Thunderous and stuff. Yeah. Like, so, like those seasonal spirits or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sweet. Actually, it looks really cool.
When you said you opened up Dragon Ball packs recently, what set did you open up? I opened up uh, Vermilion Bloodline. Oh, yeah. And yep. Saiyan Showdown, I think it was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you get anything good? Uh, we got one um, One of the, is it the secret rares or the, are they the one that's one in every case? Case. Give or take, yeah. 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 Um, we only opened one box. I mean, we opened two boxes. Two boxes. Um, it was. Vegito something. Vegito. Yeah, yeah. Warrior for another planet or something. Something yeah, like right. that. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. last warrior. Was something, something along those lines. Uh, I just remember going through the box and like, oh, we actually opened up a god pack as well. Yeah, yeah okay. It was sick. We were good, it was so like, guys, sick. I swear to God. <laughs> it was so sick. I'd never opened up a god pack in anything yeah. before. And I, I thought it was like a misprint or something. I was like, Yeah, that's what happened to me the first time. I was I like, What's going on well? here? Yeah. Like, they're all hollow. It was like, and then uh, I was with my brother in law who actually um, like knows about um, Dragon Ball. Yeah. He's like, Oh, no, that's a god pack. I was like, Oh. Excellent. Oh, very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Now the Giratina to add to the collection. Just a regular. Not, not the right sure one. Though. Be. Not the right. Not the right one. But we'll take it. It's all right. Better than better than zero guillotines. Yeah, exactly. You haven't op- opened up um Japanese Pokemon cards before. I haven't. No. <sighs> Print quality so good. Yeah, much yes. better. Ooh, yes. So nice. Ooh. Another one. Yeah. Two. Is that like a two? Nice oh, trainer gallery. Yeah. yeah. That's sick. That's sweet. That's right. Really, it's a trainer gallery card. I was like, why do I get it? No, it's not. It's just a central scorch fee, but it looks like that. Trainer gallery. Why? I was wondering why are there two hits in one pack? That's why. Tra- trainer gallery. That's sick. That's the texture. Yeah. How many of them do they have the texture on the, on the Origins? It's actually the first box of Origins I've actually opened. It. I think there's a few. That's sick. actually really cool. That's a, that's a nice one. Let's save that one up. Oh, there's alternate forms on some of the cards. Oh yeah, there's yeah. Like the, Some of them they did really, really well. Yeah, yeah. There's a few of the alt forms that are that are cool. Yeah. The, um, the Moltres. Uh, I think that one. That fancy Moltres. And the fancy Moltres. Yeah, yeah. much better than the original one. The um, yeah, the Zapdos KFC is much, chicken. Yeah, the, Z- the Zapdos KFC is chicken original so, Moltres. Yeah. So much worse. Yeah. Oh, Zapdos was. Well, it's yeah. So bad. Yeah, yeah. Go with the VMAX. Oh, sick. Pikachu. Oof. It's probably one of the more wholesome cards yeah, that you're going to get. Yeah, for sure. I've got to imagine that's one of the better uh, trainer gallery hits as well. People, yeah. people love a Pikachu. Cult following. A little mascot. Yeah. Can you show your hmm? The ones that you pulled. Yeah. All of them? No, just the last one. Oh. I do wish they would change the code card at the back, though. Yeah. Yeah, because it is a dead giveaway. Like, like I've opened this pack and now I've seen that, that it's nothing. Yeah. Because so. you want to do, like, oh, the pack mean, trick, right? Radiant. Oh, cool. Radiant. Just yeah. skimmed over that one. Yeah. I don't know if the... Like, the texture's in, like, yeah, the, the actual actually character. Actually and, like, and it's just, there's not there yeah. or not as much, rather. Yeah. The last pack magic. Oh, there's nothing else. Oh, Coke, Coke. Sweet, that's where you went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I got a radiant. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. So you can still hit the radiance on the uh, the bad code cards. Right. It's good to know. Not a heart. It's not hard. That's a half decent one, rather, as well. Got of all. No seal, good. bro. That's the pull of the whole booster box. Reverse <laughs> holly seal, man. That's there we sick. go. Uh, all right, pretty all right. Right, it's not a great box, better. but not a not a not a super bad one. So I got two, got two, I got two an altar and a gold. Yeah, is, pretty good, which is nice. A few trainer galleries, Vmax. All in all, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Can't complain with that. Yeah, check out um, Joel's shop. Plenty of games in Melbourne. Pop in, say hi, buy some stuff, play some games. Um, we are going to be sort of 
giving some stuff away with an event um, that Jack's going to be doing with you. Uh, as we mentioned before, Jack's going to be doing a, sort of one of the store held uh, flesh and blood events. So for everybody that's going to go down and play there, um, we're going to throw some prizes in. Um, and if, if Jack pulls a m- miracle out of his ass, uh, <laughs> he's going to have to give them away. We're going to do a raffle because yep. Jack can't win it. Um, but we've already given you one, Joel. I don't know when we're going to release this, so this might be well before these are actually coming out, but these uh, few people may have seen our design on the back of our spray jackets. So we work with a few different artists across... um, Cool models. So good. (laughs) (laughs) A few different artists across Melbourne. Um, And this is one of uh, our good friends, uh, Bo... Uh, Ingleton, he's done this design. He does a lot of um, Jack and I's tattoos um, and some friends of ours as well. Um, So we're taking a little bit of a different spin instead of um, licensed stuff. Um, We're going to help spread the word about some nice, cool local artists, and this will extend outside of the people within the realm of the tattoo community. However, a nice little plug on the inside for Bo, so you can read all up about him. Um, So there's a nice little bag in there. That's a nice little different take on stuff, little signature series for Bo down there. Um, we've got a nice little panel. This will change. This is actually a prototype version. So we're going to release, um, an updated version, um, with a couple of little hidden features and mysteries and stuff like that, that you'll find out on the, on the, uh, launch day. Um, yeah, we've, uh, gone with the traditional de- Japanese theme, like the only death mask. And it's, we've got like a nice wood sort of texture on there, all gold foiling, um, on the back. And then we've even gone as far as to customize the zippers. So you've got the palms off zippers. That's a scroll. I don't know. I'm pretty sure you got yeah, you did. It's yeah. incredible. It's a nice little laugh. Uh, so sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've updated them so all the teeth are, are steel as well. So um, we're, we're marketing this as like an uber, uber, uber premium thing. Um, but obviously, if we see this before, we uh, have Jack going into the shop. You may know about it and therefore want to rock up and see it in person. Um, and I'm sure you'll be able to buy one off. Um, Joel in his store 100%. as well so we release it yep. so, I, I cannot wait for them they are they're going to fly off the shelves yeah <laughs> especially with um, I reckon with what we've done with the updated version so these yeah. are the prototypes Joel, Joel's taking one home um, and yeah they'll come out in the 9 and the quad row as well um, yeah that's our plug thanks for coming in dude really thanks really appreciate it that awesome. was awesome awesome, um, awesome. Did well. Super proud of you. We all are at yeah, Palms Off. It, yeah. um, it's always nice having um, a store owner in here that's passionate about what they do. Thank you so much. Yeah. Brandy, oh, appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Thrilled to be a part of it, honestly. It's, uh, you know, never thought I'd be in a podcast yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I never thought I'd be in a podcast. And you're our first guest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a big year for you, dude. I love it's, on, it. it's only up from there, though. Mm. Like, if I'm the first guest, then you can only get better from there. No, no, no. It's all downhill from here. <laughs>